Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Android Authority podcast, discussing topics in Android every single week. I'm your host, Joshua Vergara, and uh, you have been hopefully enjoying the CES episodes that we've been doing of the podcast here, two of them of which have already been released, but this third one is actually really special and near and dear to my heart. I get to interview in this podcast Patrick Norton, one of the original, more OG pioneers of the tech world, uh, being on a network called Tech TV on the show called The Screensavers, is probably where you remember him from back in the day and nowadays he's on techthing.com with Shannon Morse Uh, so it was really an honor for me to be able to interview him for this podcast but unfortunately the camera cut out in just a few minutes after we started the podcast so you're going to see the Android Authority podcast logo uh, when that happens and then you can just listen to the rest of our wonderful conversation that centers around audio for a good portion of it and also dives into Android for a little bit as he had quite a few questions to to ask me so keep it tuned to the Android Authority podcast for even more and we have one or two more podcasts here at CES that we're going to bring you before it's all over here at the Consumer Electronics Show of 2017. This is just about the coolest thing uh, that I think I've ever done at CES. Because you and I met like two years ago. No, no, no. You, We met my first... Oh, that's the story I gave you last night when we were eating tacos. Um, where I came up to you and Veronica Belmont... And I was like, oh, so my God, I forgot Veronica Belmont. That's awesome. And I said hi to her. <laughs> and, then, and then she was like, oh, did, did, have you seen Patrick? And, uh, and then for some reason, it didn't register in my head that she said Patrick. Because I still came up to you and said, oh, my God, Edward Norton. <laughs> it's, so, it's so great to meet you. <laughs> I've been called much worse. Uh, and in traffic, I've been called things that would make, you know, most people either blush or pass out unconscious with fear. So oh. Edward Norton's kind of a compliment. Man can act. Well, hey, twenty fifth hour, great film. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, you know what, Edward doesn't have the like. You're you're almost like a legend to me, is the thing because, like, tech did not become a thing in my life until we finally got what was it at the time? Direct TV, mm-hmm. and we found this cute channel called Tech TV, and it was just about the coolest thing that I had ever watched because uh, I was slowly getting into tech at the time, and you were like a pioneer. I um, was. <laughs> I feel like one of those punk rock bands that toured for years and years. And like they used to say about the Velvet Underground, like the Velvet Underground sold a thousand albums. But those thousand albums, like the thousand people that bought them, each started a band and they were all amazing. And it was like, <laughs> I'm always, I'm, I'm actually, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm blown away because um, I run into people all the time. Yeah. And uh, I mean, one of the most powerful things that Leo and I ever ran into is, is somebody came up to us like, you know, I was a, I was a conductor, you know, on Jersey Transit. I hated my job. You know, I would come home. Your show was on. Nothing else was on at that time of day. And I started really, like, getting into the idea. And you guys weren't talking down to me. And yeah. uh, and the dude, you know, got certifications, got a job, moved into IT, and was incredibly happy. Uh, and part of me now was like, oh, man, I hope he wasn't, you know, replaced by a, you know, Indian import, you know, HP1 Visa IT worker, because that's really popular these days. But it was also, it was kind of like, oh my God, there really is somebody at the other end of the camera and yeah. they actually care. Yeah. Um, it was mind blowing because there wasn't, you know, the, the, the web was still relatively new. Nobody was doing video on the web. There was no YouTube. Mm-hmm. People were barely offering, you know, like a QCIF stream of somebody like jumping a rock was like really amazing video back then. Yeah, definitely. And it was, it was you know, it was this center for enthusiasm. And we also, we weren't taught, you know, we didn't talk crap about geeks. We were celebrating the culture. Exactly. We were, that was that the was, best part about it. It was mind blowing to realize how much impact that had for a lot of people. Well, you know, it's um, and you know, maybe we can start off our discussion here with this this notion that I kind of came up with a day or two ago that one of the biggest problems with the tech world right now Mm -hmm. is that we only use the mediums that we use to educate the masses. That's the reason why something like Tech TV or afterwards it became G4 or anything like that was so important because it actually reached people who wouldn't normally be on an iPad or on a phone, you know, because television, as we learned, we're not getting political, I'm just using this, uh, I'm just using this detail. One thing we learned in this last election is Mm -hmm. that the majority of people in America still get their news literally from television. But a lot of people in America are profoundly influenced by Facebook. That right? too, I mean, yeah. I, I, I got a, a buddy who, who runs a very, 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 very large tech website and, and, you know, they make money. Yeah. They make bank. Hmm. Um, And, you know, talking to him, he was basically like, yeah, websites are dead. It's Facebook because 
Facebook is 1.8 billion people. It's this huge attractor. They're kind of taking it. it it's kind of amazing to me to watch this media evolves, right? Because you've got YouTube, you've got Facebook. You know, I love Twitter, but Twitter's not, you know, a really good way to communicate. Mm -hmm. You can kind of, you know, it's very limited. Yeah, I mean, oh. it's 140 characters. It's exactly. very intentionally limited, and and that's a, you know, when you're getting your little haiku on, they can be, you know, they're obviously, you know, again referring to the election, like. Tweets apparently are much more powerful than we thought. Yeah, that's um, true. You know, in the whole, I don't know, it, how people communicate and where they get information and what information they trust. Mm -hmm. I mean, part of it's like, okay, I'm 3,000 years old and I started working in magazines, right? I did my, you know, I, I was sitting with, you know, a briefing with AMD this morning. And I'm really excited about Ryzen because competition for Intel and they're really about desktop enthusiasts and serious gaming performance. For sure, yeah. They've made a bunch of decisions that are around that in a way that, that Intel just isn't doing anymore, or at least not this year. And I was sitting there and I was like, oh man, or delete exploit. I don't know if you curse on this podcast, so I'll um, stay clean. We, the, we, uh, we do, just not too much is all. <laughs> not to excess. Yeah, exactly. The, uh, <laughs> the, you know, but like I reviewed my first desktop processor in... 19 like my first AMD desktop processor in like 1995 you know so I've been watching this for so long and it's always been there's always been so many things like oh it's going to replace it's going to replace brick and mortar is dead well obviously brick and mortar isn't dead right everybody's still shopping okay Amazon may have finally killed brick and mortar but they did it by delivering a better product I, I guess I'm taking a thousand words too many to say is it's always evolving there's always people that hold on to the old ways and it always gets really really confusing until everybody just kind of settles around it which is true but i feel like we've lost that in a way um especially in terms of the quote-unquote older media obviously newspapers and magazines are kind of they're they're waning for yeah, sure absolutely but television is still so powerful and i think i think that we we, we don't have any tech on television broadcast or cable well they don't want to cable you know cable especially to a lesser degree broadcast like the reason so much reality tv became such a huge part of cable television is because it's cheap true no. it is you know unbelievably cheap you know if you, you know, the the reason like so many great things come up like you know roadies i really like that show on uh, showtime the, the the television series on showtime yeah um you know that costs a lot of money to make um, and so they have to ha they have to make a lot of eyeballs off of that for them to justify that expenditure. And it's even worse in like you know if you're you know ABC, CBS, NBC still have a, a huge amount of revenue and a huge audience. But if you're like in the if you're a cable channel in the digital tiers, man, you're running infomercials at one a.m. Yeah, you're getting created with advertising. You're figuring out what the cheapest content you can put up there. And that was already starting when we were at, at Tech TV, and this mm -hmm. was like. You know, 16, 17 years ago, when yeah. you're looking around, it's like, okay, the Arts and Entertainment Channel, a sophisticated venue for advancing the culture or whatever, you know, nose in the air kind of, you know, thing they were trying to, it was, it was like them or one of the other, like, you know, we're a cultural channel for sophisticated people. And like, I looked around one day and I'm like, wait a minute, you got a show about like two twenty somethings that are running tuners on import cars? <laughs> and, and it's like their lifestyle. And uh, great entertainment, but I didn't really understand how it fit into the brand yeah, of this exactly. channel. And the, this is, you know, that's been going on. It's like at one point it went from like, you know, we're a cable channel that does this to we're a cable channel that does whatever the delete expletive makes money. And we're a cable channel that's going to do the cheapest way to, to, to make money. You know, there's still a tremendous amount of advertising revenue um, in uh, cable and broadcast television compared to online. And it's also, in some ways, still easier to find. But, like, hmm. even, t you know, pe most people, like, they may skim 20 channels, but almost the vast majority of cable users, they have, like, five channels. Yeah, four or five exactly channels they rotate they want, through. Yeah, yeah. they Definitely. go to those four or five <laughs> channels. Maybe they skim 20 on an irregular basis. But, like, if you have 470 channels, man, you spend effectively no time on 460 of them. Right. That's one of the problems is we get more options, right? Because cable is now competing not only with you know, consoles and the internet and video games and, oh yeah, going out and getting drunk and dancing and chasing bands or whatever else is out there, right? But it's also got to deal with the internet and the internet has such a low barrier for entry for people to create websites or video. Exactly. Now you have, you know, I mean, there's a giant audience on YouTube. There's a, you know, a third of the, closing in on a quarter or a third of of the planet has access to Facebook. I mean, yeah, definitely. that's mind boggling. Yeah. So of course we have to go where we have to go where the uh, the eyeballs. heat is. Yeah, yeah. Where the eyeballs are basically. Yeah. But do you think that your coverage? And we'll get to our coverage of CES in a second. But do you think that your coverage will be vastly different if your medium was still what you had before? 
Um, if we were like, you know, if we're going back to like doing cable television, yeah. like it would have to be vastly different because there's not enough. There wasn't enough money in the advertising. Like there isn't enough money in the advertising today. Like, you know, it's a real what if game. Okay. Because, um, you know, that that show started in. 98 so it would be like 19 years old now okay right so that would be a pretty mature show probably yeah. with a pretty big audience for sure um, you know the when you look around what's going on like youtubers don't make any money for the most part um you know websites with banner ads are struggling to find revenue and so much of how ces is, is covered is completely defined by what the you know what the you know the website or the video show or the television program yep. you know what I mean like mm -hmm. you know WXYZ from Paducah Wyoming bombs in here and you know the tech reporter for you know he goes and he gets the b-roll of the shiny television and the b-roll of the cars and he does like a 90 second package and maybe he meets a couple of things and he gets some headphones from somebody and he flies yeah. back you know, somebody who's, you know, I'm from Android Authority, I cover this beat, I'm looking for these things, right? Exactly, you know, yeah. Um, you know, my buddy Robert comes in here, he avoids the press days, <laughs> and then he, he comes in here for, uh, you know, some meetings with Samsung and LG exactly, and to get yeah. photos of the television to write up for his website. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he may or may not be getting some backroom briefings on what's going on or more information on release dates and stuff, right? But that's all he does is, like, home theater, and he is one of the best. Uh, you know, you uh, always have to have a focus on the new media because you, yeah. can't, you can't just be a jack of all trades. Yeah, well, which, I mean, yeah. I'm a jack of all trades, but I'm stupid that way. <laughs> well, you have so much. You have decades of experience, basically. You know, well, so for us, I mean, for our audience, like, look, I'm, 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 I'm never going to be better at Android than you are. I'm never going to be better at processors than Ryan Shroud is. I'm never going to be better at HCTVs than, than you know, Robert Heron is. By the way, AVXL, awesome podcast. Um, you know what I mean? I'm never going to be better at. You know what I mean, like, I know that, but I can also come in here and think, like, okay, my audience, they give me 30, 40 minutes a week to show them a whole bunch of useful stuff. Yeah. And what do they care about at CES? You know? Okay, cars are going to be unhinged in two to five years. You know, if you're a millennial, you're being targeted by everything. Yeah. 4K monitors are doing just what phones did, which is getting too thin, which is, you know, a weird mixture of like, that looks amazing and holy crap, it falls apart. Or, oh, wait, let's look at the LG wallpaper TV, which looks magnificent at 2.3 millimeters thin. And yeah. <laughs> they're talking about how, like, you know, for total immersion, that it had to be less than four millimeters to make it a window like experience into the soul. <laughs> and it's amazing and it's awesome. And look at how incredible this is. And and, you know, uh, it's OLED, and, and and we got the guy that did Kylo Ren's helmet to design the sound bar, which is real big and sticks way out. And there's a ribbon cable, and we spent a whole bunch of money on creating gradients on every piece of glass. We, you know what I mean? And I'm just like, really? You couldn't have just done a small breakout box? Does it does it require all of that? The whole know? delete expletive sound bar has to be there <laughs> in order for you to get HDMI and picture to the HDMI and power to the screen. So there's that big thing oh. with the pop-ups for the Dolby Atmos. Yeah. And then when you look at all the pictures of it, right, there's this big, huge, beautiful flat panel, this 2.3 millimeters thin, magnetically mounted to your wall. It's badass. And, and then there's this, like, gradient of, like, a stripe and then thinner, thinner, thinner stripes. Behind that is the ribbon cable that goes from the monitor down Into to the, the big giant oh soundbar. And the same thing with the QLEDs, the big beautiful QLEDs from Samsung. Well, yeah, we just see that. You know, the yeah. little fiber optic you know, cable or the little power cable that runs down to the breakout box for that. Sony went a different path. Um, they put all of it, they basically created a stand. And I find it fascinating because on one hand, like the, the, I'm not sure I want, you know, a, a you know, double digit OLED television that's 70 inches big on the floor of my house because, you know, I have a small child, a four-year-old and a nine-year-old, and they tend no, to look like a No, if it's just like that, I feel like it's so fragile. Like, it, you almost and, have to put it behind glass. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, and that's why, I mean, I remember thinking, like, man, I live in an old house, and the walls are kind of wavy. What's going to happen when that LG tries to clamp itself down to the plaster and laugh? Is yeah. it going to crack? There's, turns out there's some flexibility in it. But Well, we're in California, so even a small earthquake could probably <laughs> do something terrible to those super thin TVs. <laughs> yeah, I mean... You know, but it, it's so odd to watch some of this, right? Because you know they they're like you know they're they're spending all this money, all this engineering effort to make these incredibly thin flat panels, and then they do really stupid stuff like make you put a giant ribbon cable, a ribbon cable, like oh I a feel ribbon like ribbon cable really I really do feel like we we try to move way too fast sometimes 
when it comes to tech. That the actual physical tech that we have, I mean, just think about, I mean, I have to mention it, but just think about everything that they were trying to do in the Galaxy Note 7. Right. <laughs> that was such a thin, beautifully designed phone, but we realized that the problem in that phone was that there was no room for the battery to actually do what it had to do, which was expand and contract. <laughs> I mean, I, not even be, I, 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 sh I shouldn't be a smart ass, but, but, you know, the irony is Samsung's had one of its best financial years ever because memory sales are off the hook. Exactly. But, I mean, what they take, a $4 billion hit on that? They did, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, that, I was mean, that was just projected. It could be way more than that. You know, I mean, I was talking about the, you know, the iPhone 6 I bought, you know, and I bent the, I bent the iPhone 6 in the first six days I had it in my, in my hands or my wow. pocket in this case. And I'm just like, I am, I am profoundly over everything being thinner. Yeah. Because, you know, more often than not, they, you know, I want things that aren't going to fall apart. But on the flip side, like I look around at CEA and I see, a, or a CES, and I see so many products that are, you know, they're transitional, they're leading edge, they're early adopter, they're, you know, future landfill material in a lot mm -hmm. of cases. And it gets kind of depressing when you're like, wow, I bet all of that, I bet none of that still, and no, I bet nobody's using this in like two years. And yeah. it's, it's. <laughs> a gondola Dude's rider. Pipes. <laughs> yeah, he's great, man. Um, There's not even anybody in his gondola. He's doing a great job. <laughs> he's, trying, he's advertising. Yeah, you know? yeah, definitely. He's, uh, you know, he's working the available medium to maximize revenue and keep himself in a job. This yeah. is just like he's on the web, except he's on a water, a water web. Yes. A liquid network, as it were. A liquid network. I love that. Uh, this is just like the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um, but the, uh, okay, so so you obviously deal with a lot of different, especially yeah. on tech thing and all that. You, you deal with a lot of forms of tech. So how much of Android, like to kind of bring it back to our podcast, like how much of Android are you really familiar with? I mean, being an iPhone user and, you know. Well, Which, like, by the way, we don't pariah iPhone users I'll by any means. So I don't really. I, don't, people think that just because I'm the head of production at Android Authority that I right. hate iPhones. No, that's so not the case. Like, I love all tech. I love know? all the phones. Yeah. Um, I'm equal opportunity tech. You know, <laughs> I know that feeling. The uh, well, I mean, we're talking about the other day. You know, if, if the camera was better on the, the Moto G 4G. Yeah. Um, I'd still be running it. Okay. But the camera on that was atrocious. And I'm, you know, and that's I. That's decided. That's what really what we would call the mid tier. Like, yeah. that's really what it is. Because in iPhone land, it's all the same thing. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, I, this this phone wasn't exactly a treat, but I was in the situation where I was using it constantly. So I got a 128 gigabyte phone. Mm. And because I've been using iOS since version one, and I bought some really weird mapping apps and stuff, I got a few hundred dollars in software tied up in the phone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but. There was I had three issues with Android. One is 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 you know feel free to be irritated with me at patricknorton.com. No, at Patrick Norton. The dot com <laughs> doesn't belong there. But the uh, <laughs> you know the update situation, especially because like I work really closely with the crew from Hack Five, and I know mm -hmm. a lot of people who do security. The the update situation in Android really freaks me out. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, I remember like I had the, the the one thing that drove me nuts about the Moto G 4G is like, yeah, you can use you know class 10 32 gigabyte SD cards with it or micro SD cards with it, but there's a glitch, so it's gonna you know I me mean? and and the software had been repaired, but I couldn't download it. I had to wait for AT and T to download it. Yeah, so exactly, like, I, was about I bought to say. it. And the next week, I figured out I couldn't run micro SD cards on it, or at least none of the micro SD cards that I already owned, and I wasn't gonna buy a slower micro SD card so I could run it in my phone. What the hell? Yeah, you know, and then it was like. 10 or 15 weeks before the update was finally available. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, That's and a big, big issue, yeah. It's a big issue. Fragmentation is a big, big issue for developers. Well, it's funny. We, we mentioned this on... Uh, I did a uh, I did a live Q&A uh, using Instagram Live on a podcast uh, right before the uh, end of the year. Right. And someone said, like, how do you feel about fragmentation? And I realized it's what Google wanted and then realized they didn't. Because they created an open source platform that all these OEMs were able to sort of take and create, right. and Google was always going to get a cut of that. But then they realized, we can do it just as well as they can, <laughs> and we want to. Right. So now they're feeding into the same system that they kind of wanted in the first place. So, I don't know. It's a weird catch-22 when it comes yeah. to the way Google did things. Well, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating because there's, there's not... And, and it's the same problem with routers, right? Mm. You know, I sold you a router. I did an update, so now it turns on. Thanks for the money. You should buy. Oh, there's a security problem with that. You should buy a new router. Uh, oh, there's a. Video games are having a bit of the problem too, because yeah. you get a day one edition of the game, and then there's already a bunch of updates that you have to wait five hours for. Uh, so you, when you buy the game, you expect to be able to go with it. One of the funniest series of text messages I've ever gotten in my life was a really close friend of mine who would. I can't remember what game he was waiting for. 
you know, but he was like, you know, he loaded up the game. He's excited. He's got his, you know, he's got a six pack of beer and he's got his <laughs> gaming hat on and he's like, and I, I got this series of text messages over six hours while the game, like, you know, took these horrible downloads and restarts yeah. and downloads and restarts. And, and, like, I mean, that's like the gaming industry at this point. Eh, we'll fix it after. Put it in the box. We'll fix it after it ships. Well, so. that bleeding edge is is 100% the reason why I say we're moving way too fast in tech. Yeah. Yeah, because even just today, I'm not going to I'm not gonna talk about the product because I'm <laughs> under NDA, but I will say that there are certain things I couldn't do. Right in order to capture the device because the software wasn't ready. And I'm like, well, how do you expect us to, as reporters, right. how do you expect us to properly give a good look at this phone when you haven't even finished yet? Yeah. You know? I so, mean, it's, it's worse when they ship it to you and they're like, oh, yeah, we know this is the problem, this is the problem, this is the problem, but yeah. we'll be fixing that before it launches. Exactly. And it's like, but the NDA is up tomorrow. Well, we'd prefer if you didn't mention that. Yeah, the uh, the software update is to technology what the training exercise is to the military. Like, <laughs> if something bad happens, they're like, "Oh, it happened during a training exercise." Is that <laughs> yeah, I mean it's, I, I mean it's interesting, right? Because there's, I'm, you know, long term supports an endemic issue with so many products. I mean, like Synology is an interesting company. They make NAS boxes and they started doing routers, and their routers are typically getting security updates every six weeks. Hmm. Um, you know, and there's there's one way, like the Apple version of that is like, you don't need software updates because you're on OS X. You're not going to get hacked. Um, you know, and the, the, the flip side of that is like, you know, <laughs> I'm not even going to mention Adobe, but Microsoft, you know, you, there, we closed 18 critical vulnerabilities in this patch Tuesday. And, you know, it, it's... Did, it's you, did you get caught by that Windows 10 update that, like... All of a sudden, you turned it on, and it's almost as if you just bought the uh, the laptop. <laughs> no, I, that, thankfully, that freaked me the hell out. Yeah, because <laughs> you, I opened up my my computer, and it said hello, and I'm like, what happened on my data? <laughs> no, it was just updated. Thank God. The, one of the worst Windows in updates I had was, uh, you know, we're supposed to be in studio, mm -hmm. and I had left and come back, and it had restarted and applied the updates, mm -hmm. and it was 22 minutes before it finished doing this crazy series of of, of modifications to the machine. Oh no. And I'm sitting there, and Shannon's like, are you done yet? <laughs> like, no. <laughs> are you kidding me? No. <laughs> um, you know, so maybe I should turn off the automatic updates, but then I'll get the automatic updates, and i got to remember to go on Patch Tuesday and get all those. I don't mean, I don't know. I mean, is it frustrating? I mean, when you look at it, it's like, how many phones have Nougat? How many phones have Marshmallow? Yeah. How many phones have... Um, it's frustrating because I want to be able to get the latest operating system with the coolest stuff, but I also feel like so many of the Android vendors are dragging their feet. Um, well, I don't know. It's it's hard to tell. I mean, maybe that's one of the things. It's it's it, it, maybe I'll ask you. Is that a criteria when you're recommending a phone? You know, does this vendor have a track record for maintaining updates? Oh, 100 percent. Okay, um, it's not something that I mention all the time because I've been told this before. I'm not the uh, okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna. Uh, Self-deprecate right now. I'm not the most technical reviewer. Okay. My, my what I want to do is uh, present a phone, the real user experience of a phone right. based upon what is in it, and to I'm, I'm a content creator. Like we we were just about to get into this conversation earlier, that <laughs> I'm less about the products and just the sheer amount of technology that's out there. I'm more about showing it in a fun way. I'm more about right. content creating. I'm a YouTuber before I'm a journalist. That's why I tell people. Um, so in my case. Even though it is a factor, like whether or not if if something's on Android five, yes, I'm gonna say this sucks, but because we're on seven now. Right. Um, but at the same time, if it still provides you the experience that you would need on the daily, right. There's no reason to detriment it for that. My boys still routinely use an iPad one, and eventually Netflix will break compatibility with the <laughs> iPad, and, and some of their favorite games, the Locomoca games, will start working. But until then, the damn thing works. Yeah. Um, I, I will say to our to our point earlier, uh, Google adding to the fragmentation that they sort of wanted in the first place. Yeah, yeah. If you want the best software, you would be going for a Google Pixel, right? Because it comes straight from Google. So I don't know. Uh, that could be your way out. Right. I'll use the word term way out <laughs> <laughs> from the update hell that is out there. Um, because Google will send it OTA via the Wi-Fi. It won't. It won't have to go through Verizon unless it's a Verizon activated phone. Right. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, that would be probably the main way to do it. So, oh, uh, David is actually asking if we have a time and place for the podcast tonight. Yes, please. Oh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, Thanks, man. David's checking on the podcast for tonight. I'm like, oh, I gotta, I'm doing it right now. <laughs> I'll tell him after we're done. 
Um, but yeah, I think that I don't know. It's a it's a it's a double edged sword for me that. I love what Samsung does with Android. I love what LG does with Android. Right. I love what a lot of Chinese companies do with Android. But if I really want to just have a good experience every day that's reliable, mm -hmm. I have to go straight to Google. And that destroys what the original purpose of Android was. Right. Well, I mean, was it was that the original purpose or were they trying to be... A, it seems like they well, were trying ASOP. to be incredibly attractive to... AOSP, that is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they were, they were trying to be incredibly attractive to hardware manufacturers mm -hmm. that would pick it up. Yeah. It's free. Do whatever you want to it. It's open source. Yeah. You know, and... and <laughs> You know they all they needed to get in on the car. I feel like the whole update thing through the carriers was something the carriers extracted in exchange, yes. you know, for allowing Android to work with the carriers. More I than mean, likely, for sure. Uh, which is frustrating because there's, it just takes so long for the carriers to get through. What? Uh, I mean, from a you know self-deprecating content creator over you know technical <laughs> resourcery. I mean, what's the thing that's got you most excited about Android right now? Uh, right now? Google Assistant. Yeah. 100%. Everyone's going AI. And I'm not going to say that I like AI uh, per se, um, but I like this idea. <laughs> Skynet. Especially, oh, sorry. <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> yeah, Skynet, basically. <laughs> I do like this idea, though, that um, the way to get things done on a device right. is sort of shifting. So I could say, I don't have it on right now, but I could be like, okay, Google, and something will happen on the phone, and I just ask it something. It's just this voice command type of uh, navigation and communication with the device. Sure. And I, I use Google Assistant way more than I thought I would. Really? Way more. I was making uh, coconut, uh, low carb. <laughs> oh, he's got a beat going. Uh, I was using, I was trying to make for Christmas right. coconut low carb eggnog, and I didn't know how to convert tablespoons to ounces or something like that. I know the feeling. So I was literally there, like mixing it up in the pot, and then I'm like, okay, Google, how many ounces is in five tablespoons or something like right. that? And it just gave it to me right away. I like the assistant part of right. AI. I don't really like the intelligent part of AI. <laughs> because if it's learning things about me, that's a little bit scary. It's, but if 2 it's 2 o'clock on a Wednesday, and you're usually near McDonald's at this time. <laughs> Should we go to McDonald's now? Have you considered trying a Whopper from Burger King? It exactly. might be a tasty alternative. And and like, <laughs> it'll like alert my, my closest friends and family that I'm somewhere at 2 a.m. when really I'm actually out on a date <laughs> or something, and I don't want anybody to know that. Like... That's where the, the fears can come in. But the assistant part of Google Assistant, right. I think, is it's, it's amazing to me. It's been fascinating to watch. My, my co-host on Tech Thing, um, Shannon, uh, bought an Amazon Alexa immediately. She wanted to review it. And it just has become this staple in her house. And it's really funny to me, in part because she comes out of hacker culture first. Mm -hmm. um, and she's extremely aware of information privacy and security. And to have her like this, have this always on thing that records snippets of conversation and sends them up to Amazon's cloud. Or, you know, I mean, it's like, it's always so funny to me. I'm like, so you got a microphone in your house that the NSA can decide to make Amazon, give them availability to the recordings on, and give them a gag order. And she's like, that's a little tinfoil hat. I'm like, oh, I'm the one with the tinfoil hat today. But yeah, right? it's, it's like a game we play back and forth because we know so many people in security. And then you hear something and you're like, wow, just when I thought my tinfoil hat wasn't thick enough, it turns out there's even more horrible stuff going on, you know, online somewhere in the world. Yeah. But the, uh, it's been amazing to watch how Amazon, thank you, uh, you know, how Amazon Alexa, like Amazon Alexa was everywhere here. And one of the things is like, oh, Amazon's winning and Google Home is lost. And like Google Home started three months ago. 20 bucks says Google Home is going to be here with a vengeance at yeah. CES 2018. Well, they, they, they kind of shot themselves in the foot because to make an Amazon, to make an Amazon Alexa, uh, let's say, competitor, right. they didn't make it do all the same things as Amazon Alexa. You know, the, the, what's the running joke we always have about Google is that all of its users are beta testers. <laughs> So we, we're, we're the ones that are testing out the new features as they come along. We never get a fully finished product when it so comes to Google. So that's where Microsoft got that for Windows 10. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, how do you feel about that? Um, how do you feel about this whole AI movement? Because you're right, Alexa is starting to be put into things. I mean, on, on one hand... And Google I, Assistant, but... I was reading entirely too much science fiction as a very small child or, <laughs> or, or a young man or, or still today. So there's some part of me that it... it I, you know, I think it's going to be a tool for good yep. or a tool for, you know, my, my personal nightmare is the scene in Minority Report where, like, Tom Cruise is chucking down this hallway and all of these, you know, advertisements are scanning his iris and being oh, like, yeah. you know, 
you know, you'd look great in a pair of jeans. The gap is around the corner. You know what I mean? Like, he's trying to, like, evade a murder charge. And even without... So Bl Black the Mirror is your biggest fear, is oh, it? Oh, yeah, pretty much. The... Uh, <laughs> You know, someday I'll finish getting through episode one of that show. Um, it's tough. It's tough, right? But it's like you know, you you look at the, you know, on one hand, I you know, there's there's, you know, just the 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 revelations from the Snowden report, the the giant data warehouses in Utah, and all this crazy stuff, and you're like, wow, <laughs> man, the Soviets would have loved this back in the right? '60s and '70s and '80s, right? You know, and, it's funny. This is a very different conversation than what we had when I first met you. Because I remember we went to a, uh, we were at a Philip DeFranco meetup, and uh, I was talking to you there because I didn't know anybody else. Right. Um, and you were telling me about how there's so much technology out there that's going to make the lives of like your kids better and right. all this stuff, and that's what gets you jazzed. You but might have got is, me in one of the hopeful days. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it, it also it swings back and forth, right? Yeah, because, for sure. It's a know, pendulum for sure. I mean, it is like you know, this thing, that thing. This is mind blowing. Like I said this a few years ago when somebody's you know. Somebody's like, you know, what what are your predictions? What are the future of your New Year's? And I'm just like, you know, it's, it's just like screw jetpacks. You know, I was I was dry. You know, I was using my you know eight ounce you know screen with a you know, it was just like I was I was I was bombing to Sacramento because I had to pick up like a truck part or something. And I heard that uh, you know this this the the singer of this punk rock band had passed. You know, and like I hit two buttons. I was downloading my favorite song from the band and I'm singing it along while I'm being guided to my destination via global, you know, a global satellite <laughs> positioning system. Yeah. You know, while receiving, you know, messages from my friends and have the ability to search what basically amounts to most of the world's total some knowledge of information and a lot of really cranky YouTube comments. You know what I mean? Like, like these things are amazing. They are. You know, um, but I also got to teach my kids that, you know, you get you actually do have to learn how to make your bed. You can't just wake up and grab the iPad and spend three hours watching video. You have to do your homework. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, maybe part of it's also is like watching, you know, the four-year-old and the nine-year-old's relationship to the to the, to tablets, especially, um, is a little trippy to watch because, like, you know, they get down there in those games and they want to stay there for six or twelve hours. And I have to explain to my wife, like, no, no, many of our closest friends of this family grew up playing video games for hours, and you like them, and they're perfectly well-adjusted adults. But exactly. she also came out of a family with no video games and had like the ex-boyfriend who, you know, would it had a tight relationship to bongs and first-person shooters and just wasted yeah. a lot of time so yeah i was the final fantasy kid i just played final fantasy all the time that took up all my time uh but you would you would hope at least that growing up makes you a more well-rounded person because yeah. you learn more things and one of the things that helps you experience and want to try new things is the internet yeah you know well, I learned, I mean, I, you were saying like you know <laughs> google how many ounces are in a cup? Yeah. Like my son's like he wants to make a bow because he's he he's been he do, going to this like camp and one of the things they do is they do archery, and you know he wanted to make a bow and we got a bow kit and it's an amazing kit but he's not ready to take like a seventy two inch hickory stave and use a spoke shave to bring it down to the right size and yeah. do all. I mean like will he get to that point? Absolutely. I'm like you know what we can do? We can get some PVC from Home Depot, you know and paracord or I got some like you know 100 pound <laughs> string and we can bake you a bow yeah. out of stuff we can buy at Home Depot in like 25 minutes and they're actually really effective bows and of course there's like nine YouTube videos 30 websites exactly, and yeah. like so I'm I'm blown away like I learned how to iron a shirt on YouTube you know are you wondering what temperature your meat should be at yeah, you, know, exactly. like, you know what I mean like all it's it's I mean I'm still yeah I'm still blown the Gutenberg project hot tip Australian copyright laws like in the United States basically um Disney decided that they had to protect the mouse at all costs, so, so they basically screwed up public domain for everybody for approximately forever. And then somebody went, you know, you could have just trademarked the mouse and then nobody could use it. You wouldn't have had to have screw up copyright. They went, oh, okay, well, copyright's already screwed up, so we'll take the trademark. And But copyright law is different. So basically, like, no book after eight, 1987 fundamentally is, is going to enter uh, public domain in any reasonable amount of time. But it turns out Project Gutenberg, which is the online depository of books, mm -hmm. uh, like in Australia, if you go to like Project Gutenberg in Australia, it has all the books because their copyright laws are completely different. Oh, right? wow. Uh, and it's, you know, not like BitTorrent. <laughs> <laughs>
or <laughs> Cody in that case. <laughs> so what was the um, so shifting back to CES? Like okay. what, what was the what 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 did get you jazz uh, here? I'm using that phrase a lot actually. Um, <laughs> but what was your favorite thing that you saw so far? Um, We're okay. not even done yet. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've I um, man. Um, Sony's uh, OLED Bravia OLED TVs. Oh sure. All right, and and they've but the got refresh this. rate's so weird on those. Well, you know, it's always I don't know if the refresh rate is so weird or what they're doing with the extreme HDR processing. But what kind of blew my mind about that is they're they've engineered the speaker so that the the panel is essentially radiating the sound. Oh wow. Yeah, and I mean I still want like 5.1 surround sound because I'm an audio geek, but it was really effective and really cool. Um, you know, as as dumb as I think the sound bar is that the the LG uh, the LG Super UHD televisions that 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 wallpaper TV mm -hmm. is kind of trippy to look at so I mean you know I do a podcast about home theater with Robert Hare and like AVXL so obviously I'm coming out look at the shiny screens they're so pretty um, you know there's still no affordable 4k projectors um, you know the, the 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 new two terabyte Kingston USB drive. I'm really down oh, yeah, with that. For sure. Like I have two hard drives in my bag, so the idea of having like a two terabyte drive that's like, a third of the size of one of those. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it came out of Han Solo's toolbox of the Millennium Falcon. It's not the most elegant design. <laughs> um, you know, looking at all the Alexa stuff mm -hmm. and being like. Uh, Curry, like Shannon was all over the Curry robot, which is essentially Alexa built into a robot that can run around your house and has a face to react to what oh, you're saying I and saw, stuff. Yeah, I saw her clip on that. Yeah, um, you know, I, I don't get excited about autonomous lawnmowers. Um, you know, like I, you know, there's like six command, there's six Alexa commands you can use with LG's new uh, refrigerator with a 29 inch tablet in the front, which mm -hmm. I'm just like. No, you know, buy an Android tablet and glue it to the front. Buy a, buy a, you know, buy an iPad and glue it to, you know, get a magnetic mount for the front of your refrigerator. Well, how about the com the cameras on the inside that show you what you have or don't have? Like you know, I, I I keep like I got two kids that are eating me out of house and home, and their combined weight is still under 150 pounds, and I still don't particularly need the ability to access the interior contents of my refrigerator at all Fair. times, 24 hours a day. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm sure it's wonderful to have your refrigerator take a snapshot of the interior so you know the contents at all times. Or like, you know, if you touch the flat panel in the right way on the LG, it basically goes transparent so you can see the stuff behind it, which is so, you know, hiding amplifiers in my friend's BMW in 1989. But I just like some of this stuff I giggle a lot about. I mean, the speakers get me really excited. Oh, sure. There's more amazing headphones right now. You know, it's um, interesting that you bring that up. Uh, I got to ask this, and this will probably be one of the last things we'll talk about. Um, as an audio geek, as you said, your words, um, how do you feel about the trend of losing headphone jacks on phones? <laughs> There's this uh, phrase a friend of mine who grew up in Boston uses that I will not do because it's profoundly offensive. Um, and, and he does it in a Southie accent, so it's particularly amusing and profoundly okay. offensive. I hate it. I mean, on <laughs> yeah. one hand, I'll be honest with you, like, Bluetooth, <clears throat> Bluetooth was atrocious. Bluetooth is fantastic for the vast majority of people that are listening to audio, including myself. There's a bunch of stuff I do over Bluetooth, and I don't think I could A-B tell the difference between like the Bluetooth song or the song Hardwired. My issue with Bluetooth is, is, is I get really frustrated by having to have batteries or to recharge my headphones. True. Yeah. Right? Um, I get frustrated by not being able to plug anything I want to into the phone. I also own like nine pair of headphones because I'm a freak. Um, so obviously, I'm sort of at the far end of the spectrum on that one. What's your top headphone? What's your favorite one? I'm really, really in love with AudioQuest Nighthawks. Um, wow. Okay. They, they started the Carbon Nighthawk. It's it's not the tuning on it will not appeal to all people. Okay. But it is profoundly natural sounding. It is the most comfortable headphone I've worn. Okay. Um, the they're the original Nighthawks. They're closing those out for three fifty, and they've got a new one that came out. It's like seven hundred dollars. It's an expensive see, headphone. See right now, Adam but, Molina, who's our sound guy, is person. Uh -huh. he's, if he's listening to this, his head is exploding. He's like, <laughs> oh my god, that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Oh man. <laughs> well, there's like it's amazing to hear because there's been this battle between what you call dynamic headphones, like speakers next mm -hmm. to your ear, and planar magnetics, which you, you take this incredibly thin piece of plastic, um, you put, you know, electro, like traces on it, you run, you, you put a magnet, a big powerful neodymium magnet on the other side of it, you run the audio signal through the traces on the surface of the plastic, and oh, then wow. this big giant piece of plastic moves a great giant amount of air, you know, and I heard, uh, I had this, this, uh, uh, 
a company called JDS Labs. I was testing uh, the Element, and it, it's a it's a DAC and a power amp for headphones, and it's gorgeous. It's a big giant knob that floats there above the the bass unit, and it 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 goes like one watt of power, which is like eight times more power than you need for the vast majority of headphones on the planet. So I was like, oh wow, I want to really test this thing and, and drive it, and I picked up a set of Planar Magnetics uh, Fostex. Japanese company, been around forever. Because um, people are like, Monoprice is a pair of you know, $190 planar magnetics. Like, go buy the Fostexes. Like, the, uh, the Fostex TR, T50RP Mark III. Yeah. And they're really, really, in the headphone community, like, people love to mod them. They've been playing around them for a while. But, you know, you listen to it, and you're like, this is what a cymbal sounds like. This is what, you know, it doesn't go down, like, a lot of planar magnetics, they go down to, like, 20 or 10 hertz, which is an unbelievable experience if you have, you know, not just EDM, but classical music, or like, I was listening to like Preservation Hall Jazz Band, where they have a couple tubas. Tubas go down to like 31 hertz, man. Wow. And these, the really good headphones, you feel it. It's not like feeling it in your chest, because you're inside the club, but it's a pretty good approximation. But like these Fostexes, and I'm like, okay, these Fostexes, these TRP, uh, TRP, T50RPs, these sound amazing, and they're like 140 bucks. I'm like, and then I like found, I, I went on eBay and I found a pair, or, or uh, like used on Amazon from Audio Authority or somebody, I found a pair of what was then like the next big step up and uh, uh, Hi-Fi Man HE400s. The HE400S, which is a different model, is like the wire cutter's pick for the best over-ear headphone under $400. How much $400. are those, though? Those sell for like, I think they sell for $300. Yeah, that's, that's a price point that I just can't really fathom. Bam, I get it. Know? I yeah. totally get it. Like, yeah. dude, like Sony MDR 7506s, they sell for 75 bucks. You probably can't find anything better for less than 150 bucks, or you know, for less than 200 bucks, probably. Yeah. Um, the uh, I love uh, <clears throat> One More's triple driver. They just came out with a quad driver. The triple driver normally sells for 99 dollars. Um, got a microphone built in. They sound amazing. I mean, really, really good. They, you know, they it, they don't have they they're not boomy in the low end. There's not strident or hissy in the high end. You actually get some sound stage. You can feel some of the, it's, They sound fantastic. Pretty much any type of music. Um, and you got to spend a lot more money before you get something that sounds appreciably better than this hundred dollar set of earbuds. Which is funny because all of that that you're talking about right. just doesn't translate from a smartphone, and now we're actually losing well, I, the headphone jacks. Yeah, I mean it's, it's crazy, <laughs> but part of that, right, is is uh, um, you know when you when you look at something like a four hundred dollar set of headphones or or the really intense stuff like you know Mr. Speakers, which they sell like they're a Southern California company. They make you know. Uh, planar magnetics in house down in SoCal. You know they're like they started like thirteen, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars, right? Jeez. You know, uh, Focal's Utopia. That's a four thousand dollar headphone. They they basically like I was talking to the one of the marketing directors at, at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest earlier this year. You know they make the they make the speaker out of beryllium. Like you got to wear hazmat suits and respirators <laughs> oh or work with beryllium. God. It's incredibly toxic, but it's also the stiffest, lightest thing they can. They found that they can make a driver out of. So remember this stuff, Adam. We got to do it for sound guys. You know, and, <laughs> and you get this. You know, the performance on this driver is insane. And you put in there four thousand dollars. It's ridiculous. I can yeah. buy like you know half the cars I've owned in my life cost less than four thousand dollars. And but you put these on. And if you have a quality, you know, if you've got like lossless audio and a decent headphone amplifier, you're there. Yeah. You're hearing everything that's in the music, right? But the flip side is like, you know, the the uh, Sennheiser Momentums came out a few years ago, and at the same time the Sennheiser Momentum came out at CES, they brought the first like Orpheus. And the Orpheus was this crazy moonshot from Sennheiser. It's like twenty eight thousand dollars, blah blah blah, umpteen tubes, crazy, you know. And I'm listening to this. What you know, the the Momentum sell for like one hundred and fifty bucks now. They launched it like three hundred bucks. And I'm listening to this three hundred dollar headphone. And I'm listening to like this headphone, you know, amp combination I just seen sell on eBay for like twenty grand. And, and I'm like, because they didn't make it anymore. And I'm like, you know, the $300 headphones got me like 94% of the way to the $28,000 headphones. That's good to know. It's yeah. good to know. But I, when you start listening to stuff and you start learning what it sounds like or you go from like, you know, the best thing you can do for audio is like pay for premium Spotify. Um, you know, if you got if you're into Spotify, pay for premium Spotify because there is they do the an, flag, right? Isn't it flag? Yeah, files? there's yeah. A, there's an audible difference between the higher resolution stuff and the lower. Not yeah. not like high resolution audio. Like we have 192 24 bit audio that's going to really blow your mind because there's all of the like I I, I hear some people and I I, I want to believe that they're hearing you know airier symbols and more of the yada yada, uh -huh. but. I don't know anybody who can A, B, me the difference between like a high resolution audio track and a CD audio track, or maybe I just haven't found the right person. 
but I feel when, like they might be a little rare, yeah. Yeah, but when you're when you're looking at Spotify or Tidal, it's worth paying for the premium version because you're losing a lot of the like like Pandora, like don't get me wrong, man. Bob Marley on an AM radio in a pickup truck with one janked out speaker, it's still Bob Marley, man. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> but you know, I would rather, you know, Pandora on like even a Sonos box at home drives me nuts because, you know, it's a little trashy. You have, you have, so you have that intonation. You, you're not intonation. You have the, I guess the word I'll use is palette. The palette well, for the ear. You know how to point, find that. I probably saw 200 bands a year. You oh, know what wow. I mean? It was like, you know, I was in college. I was in New York. And we're back. <laughs> a little bit. The, the battery on here, I have to remember to always have the uh, power bank on hand because it's nice to be able to power it that way. Batteries, Batteries just aren't doing it. Like like a double A's. Gigafactory came online. Tesla's Gigafactory came online. Oh, it did? Yeah, this <clears> week. <throat> like they, you know, they just happened to flip the switch on the Panasonic Tesla battery production facility outside of Reno. Oddly enough, this week. How amazing. There you go. But it's like, it's a tiny footprint of what it's going to be. So yeah. I keep dreaming at like lithium ion battery prices are going to drop. Well, I love where the they're going with everything because especially the, the solar panels on the roof that they're, right. that they're planning on. Like, I can't wait to get my own house to do that. I got to make enough money for that first, but. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. The, uh, but we were talking before, like, it's not so much I don't have special ears or a particular palate but at one point in my life you know I was in I was in school in New York City it was mm -hmm. it was when you, you could still actually go there were a lot of music venues like you could have two slices of pizza or go to CBGB's and see six bands or the Continental or a bunch of other places mm -hmm. so we went to you know I probably saw 200 bands a year at that point in my that's life that's awesome you know and, and that was like the stages were like three feet high if they weren't like eight inches high mm -hmm. and I'm standing like you know six feet from somebody's ride cymbal. I get a really good idea what a ride cymbal sounds like or Mike Watt's bass coming out of a Galleon Kruger cabinet. Man, you know, I was four feet from that thing. I know exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> and when you start, when you start, like, really, really listening, you know, you go with, like, hey, you know, it's Bob Marley singing. It's like, sure. hey, it's, it's Bob Marley singing. And, wow, man, I really like the way that... And then you start hearing more and more of the music. And at some level, when you have a good recording, you're not really hearing the music. You're hearing the music in the place it was recorded and how it was engineered. And that's really crazy because, like, really good stereo speakers, you're sitting there and, like, you're staring at a wall or a picture of your mom or the fireplace or whatever is between those two speakers. <clears throat> you know, but, but, you know, wow, man, that's... Adele sitting there and the bass player and whoever's over. You know what I mean? Like you get this this idea of a sound stage. Yes, and they, exactly. It's crazy because like you know two tracks can basically give you a vivid you know image of of everything that was going on. And it's crazy right now. There's so many good headphones out right now that are cheap. Like what what Elac's doing. Uh, got a designer named Andrew Jones is now working at Elac. And the dude has been making speakers forever. He started out in measurements, and at one point he was making like $50,000 a pair of bookshelf speakers. Jeez. And then he turned around and went to Pioneer and made these incredibly in inexpensive speakers that sound amazing. And then when he left Pioneer, he went to Elac. Like the Elac debuts are 279 a pair. You're not finding anything better for the money. Wow. You know, and the Unifies are like $500 a pair. And I can't find, like, the next jump up for me is like $1,500 for a set of Kef LS50s. Wow. You know, so. That's crazy because like I've I've always I've always used and heard the term audio file. I've never truly experienced what that meant. I like audio geek. until right here. <laughs> well, yeah, audio geek is good too. Yeah, because file is a, kind of a weird end of yeah. a word. But well, audio geek for sure. But yeah, you 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 clearly personify that and like. But yeah, that's fun. really awesome. Yeah, I can bring it back to Android before we go if you want to. So um, <clears throat> I want to say Pioneer and Onkyo or Pioneer the, the home audio stuff from Pioneer oh, and Onkyo about merch. This yeah, yeah. And they came out with Android powered uh, audio file music players, right? Mm -hmm. Like they do balanced audio out to headphones, they do all of the lossless, they do DSD, you know, they're like $700, so they're coming out with an inexpensive one that is not Android, but they're also, instead of like doing the V20 thing and adding in better audio circuitry into an Android phone, mm -hmm. they're taking an Android, a high-end Android audio player and adding a modem into it and turning it into a cell phone. <laughs> You know what I mean? So that's yeah. like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah My start, wife will be like, you, you should spend be. how much? Yeah. <laughs> For real audio, starting in the right place and then doing the rest. I mean, the V20 is, is pretty smart. And the reality is it's like, you know what? Most of these are pretty good in terms of audio playback. I still think that the HTC 10 gave me a slightly better audio experience, to be honest. The V20 yeah. is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But the HTC 10 was the most fun I had listening to just about anything. Yeah. You know, so. But yeah, definitely. Um, I know you have to go pretty much. Yeah, we pretty much both have to go at this point. Uh, but yeah, I just want to thank you again, Patrick. Thank you so much for coming Thanks for on. Having me. And I can't wait. Honestly, like you, you're up in uh, doing tech thing up in uh, NorCal, right? Yeah. So what Richmond, part of California? In Richmond. Okay. You know what? Um, I can come up there. I've Road been trip. on. Road yeah, trip. I would love to. 
<laughs> come on, come on, come on. Of course, if you'll have me. You should me. Skype in from Mobile World Congress. We should get you guys to Skype in. Oh, that'd be great. That would be awesome. All right. Well, I would love to. Like, the collaborations like this, I want... We talked about this, too, the last time we saw each other. That collaboration was sort of... It's been a busy of, year. It's, it has been, yeah. <laughs> um, collaboration has been not really waning in the tech space, but I feel like there's a resurgence of it. And I want to be... Well, it got really competitive between a lot of people. And, exactly. And then it got the whole sort of YouTube insidery backstabbing thing, and then everybody started to chill out and be friends again. Exactly. You know, which is what I hope this podcast is illustrating on uh because we we had we had uh pocket now yesterday we had pretty much everybody the day before and then i have you here and i'm, I'm just so humbled you know by having it's you on fun, dude so okay one last question sure then I, then I swear i'll stop yeah um mid-range phone yeah motorola is pretty much their stuff's been out for a while you had uh honor 6x you've got zte's v8 which one looks like the best one wow that's a good question um as of right now, I would have to say Honor's been doing some really great stuff. And if you're able if you're able to sort of bump up the price just a little bit, you can go from Honor 6X up to Honor 8. And the Honor 8 is an exceptional phone at its mm -hmm. price because I hate the way they market it because they, they literally use the word millennial in every sentence when they that were marketing it. That was a big it. thing at CES this year, yeah. starting with the very first presentation, the Fiat Chrysler yeah. Portal. <laughs> and you're thinking like, Portal good, yeah! And then you're like, it's an electric minivan for millennial families. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I do think that Honor has been doing a really good job, mm -hmm. and it's one of the easiest phones to get because it's it's like front page center on Amazon, and it's super easy to get. Same thing with the Honor 6X. Um, so I would say Honor, but the ZTE Blade V8 Pro, uh -huh. not bad so far. Not bad so far. There's definitely some good features on there. Um, the uh, what. What? There's a hang time on on when you hit the button on the camera on that there before is. it snaps, and I'm just it, it, that's the one thing. It's like everything else looks fantastic and it feels good in the hand. I mean, mm -hmm. click, and I'm like, I wonder if they're gonna fix this. Takes the picture in firmware yeah. at some point. That's always going to be the the Achilles heel is that just that little bit of polish, uh, because obviously they're using like a Snapdragon 635 or right. something like that or 620 or whatever the case may be. Uh, so of course there's gonna be that little bit of slowness to it. Uh, but I, you know. The main thing I would say, our phone of the year for 2016 was the OnePlus 3T. And if really? you're able to add just $100 more to your price point to make it about two, three ninety nine, to make yeah. it three ninety nine, you could get one of the best phones on the market right now. All right. We're so, working on it. All right. <laughs> you want me on Android so bad. <laughs> Are Android tablets dead? I'm sorry. I thought oh, I was going to stop asking questions. No, you're totally fine. Um, they not, just seem not to all have of them. stalled. Android tablets have just stalled. They've completely stalled, and there's one really good reason for it. Uh, actually, one really horrible reason for it, but one, one reason for it. Android's not made for tablets. Android, as a whole, is just not made for a large screen. Right. Uh, you don't have the Windows side of things. Even iOS, to some extent, is not really made for a huge screen, right. but they've done a good job of catering it. Right. Um, now, I have to give a shout-out, because I didn't get to see these guys at CES this year, but Remix OS basically takes the Android back end uh -huh. and puts a Windows front end on it. Oh, funny. And it's so, it's awesome. You can have a window on the left uh, and look at your calendar and look at your Slack and all that stuff via, and they all look like the Android app. They're just in separate windows. And on the right side, you could be playing Clash of Clients. Nice. So it's all at the same time. It does require a pretty powerful machine, uh, and those do exist, like the Nexus tablets sure. or stuff like that. But yeah, uh, that's what's needed. Or else, otherwise, Windows tablets are, at the LA Auto Show, we saw a Porsche that literally had Chinese tablets on the back of headrests. And they were like, look, we have Android. <laughs> and, like, and that's really all that Android tablets are kind of good for at this right. point. I mean, you can um, play video. I mean, they work good for a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, it's, no, definitely. It's not the most elegant. Because I, 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 one of the things I've been dealing with is I've, I've been testing this 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 Rune audio player. It's a it's kind of like, you know, it's it's an audio system. And it runs on Android or iOS. But iOS disconnects. Android won't disconnect. So it doesn't have, it doesn't have to reconnect to the Rune player every time you relaunch or, or go come back from sleep with the application. And I'm like, wow, man, I can't find a 10-inch tablet with better specs than the one I already own from 2014. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I would say um, tablets do need a resurgence. I do think that they're still useful in a lot of cases. It's just that when the phone has more capabilities than even the tablet right. does, then well, what's the point of having the Did tablet? Did phablets kill the tablet? Fragmentation killed the tablet, is and then and, <laughs> and and phablets are exactly part of that reason. You know, why would you make a six-inch phone? Why would you make a six-inch six-inch phone? No, bigger is better. Not for me. Six-inch. That, that sounded terrible. I'm not gonna even go. <laughs> 
Six inch phones are an abomination in my in my opinion. I've never liked a six inch phone. Look, it's not like my hands are small, but yeah. Somebody's like, why didn't you get the six S? And I'm like, because they won't fit in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, if I had the the smaller Pixel, right. I wouldn't need this pop socket on the back to hold it easier. Uh, but other than that, I remember oh the Sony Xperia Z Ultra uh -huh. from three years ago. I remember there was a segment on that video where I gave it to some of my friends, and they were like, that's not a phone. <laughs> and that's the thing. The general public doesn't understand why the companies do that kind of thing. You and mean, like, think, why they make the phones why thinner, they why they it. make the television thinner, and why yeah. they... And they think it's cool, right. but they would never buy it. You know? There you have it. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Uh, kind of bringing it full circle, that's my whole point is that I'm afraid that the tech community and honestly many communities in general, we've gotten too used to preaching to the choir. It'll be interesting to see whether Apple can yeah. look outside for, for their customers rather than keep doing what they think their customers or what they need to tell their customers to do. Like, yeah, that's, when that's I've got true. people who have been using MacBook Pros for, you know, since before Windows, like since like Windows 98, are like, I'm thinking about moving back to Windows because I hate the MacBook Pro. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> dude. Yeah. You were like OS 10 on a raging stick. And he's like, the specs suck. I'm not paying that much for it. And I was like, wow. I mean, I want to I want to see like, I don't know. I, you know, it's been a rough year for Samsung, but like, man, a lot of people were pissed off about the iPhone 7 too. Yeah, they are. Um, but there's, but it's still it's still selling. Yeah. Well, Samsung's diving a little bit more into uh, uh, some places that I would love to see them dominate. Not dominate. I shouldn't say dominate. But succeed. I, succeed. Such yeah, a lovely I wanna, word. I want to see them. I want to see them actually be a part of it. Right. I guess is why I'm saying. Um, high end gaming laptops. The Odyssey laptops look so good. Yeah. I actually think they're amazing. There's a lot. I mean, Dell announced gaming laptops. Um, I really want to see if the. Uh, I really want to see if LG's. Um, I can't think of the name of it. They're their 2.16 pound, 14 inch laptop. They're oh, claiming I'm, 21 I'm hours of battery on that life on that also. one. You know, I want to call it the Grail, but obviously that's not the name. Yeah. Um, but the uh, yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's it's at some point I'm feeling like you know thinner and thinner bezels and thinner devices. Man, we've said this like six times in this show. Um, you know, I would I would like to see more products that are yeah built for how people use them. Mm -hmm. You know, and not for. You, know, you can have this amazing thing, but if you have children, you're going to hate your life because you're spending your entire time <laughs> protecting the amazing thing that is incredibly delicate from the creatures that you have, you know, bred. Um, I don't know, man. Specialization is very underrated in tech. Yes. Everybody wants to do the. Th everyone wants that one product that every single person will use, <laughs> but well, I don't know this. But but CES, like especially if you go down into the sands, mm -hmm. or if you look at some of the vendors, where it's like you know people are like building you know little tiny sensors, and all they do is like detect temperature. Or there's it's amazing like how much very very you know narrowly focused stuff you can find if you look around, especially at the edges or over at the sands. That's worth doing. Uh, um, definitely. I don't know. I haven't uh, been able to go to the sands yet. Um, you I mean, should right. go. I should get my badge first. Fit, yeah, you probably will need that, <laughs> which means you're probably going there tomorrow, not yeah, today. Exactly. Oh my goodness! I should get going because yeah, I've here. kept you an extra 13 minutes. No, and you're all I good. Gotta run upstairs. I just want to make sure that I get just one pick of us because I got commemorate. Got commemorate this momentous moment for my, for me. <laughs> Seriously though, like wait for the gondola. Wait for the gondola. Oh, we gotta wait for the gondola. So we're gonna lean in and just wait for him to come by. He's so close. Oh yeah. Go for it, please. All right, there you go. <laughs> He's so close. He's so close. On three, one, two, and awesome. <laughs> I can't wait for that to be the thumbnail on YouTube. <laughs> All right, well, thank you again so much. And I, 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 <laughs> I didn't realize we were still recording. No, I think no, I no, we're all too. good, yeah. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, thank you again so much. And oh, it, it awesome. you, you can find all of Patrick's links in the show notes. Or if you're watching the YouTube version, it'll be in the description below. But seriously, this is probably one of my favorite moments I've ever had in the tech world. I'm honored, you man. Thank awesome. you so much for having me. Oh, yeah, no, you, you humble Mobile me. World Congress, Skype in a tech thing. T E K T H I N G dot com. Or you YouTube.com slash tech thing. <laughs> All right. We'll see if we can make that happen. All right, cool. So uh, stay tuned for the last podcast. I think we have maybe one or two more, and it's just going to be the team. So I think we're good to go on that. So thank you so much for watching, and Patrick Norton, guys. <laughs>